Hey guys, it's Kelsey. I'm back with another scrapbooking process video and today is stretch the sketch. So this is the sketch we're using today. It's a 12 by 12. So again, I'm going to squish it down into an eight and a half by 11. So I already have my eight and a half by 11 wood grain. This is not part of my Felicity Jane kit for this month, but I only have two 12 by 12s left and I did not want to have to trim down one of the 12 by 12s to be an eight and a half by 11. So I pulled one in from my stash and that yellow gingham that you saw is going to be the 12 by 12 I mount it on at the end. So I'm going to start composing this page. I'm pretty much just following that sketch. I'm just changing the proportion down to an eight and a half by 11. Um, hopefully this process is pretty clear because I don't want to have to explain too much while I work on it because I really want to talk more during this process video about what this photo is about. So this is my 30th birthday from last year and one of my presents um, was a box of folded up pieces of paper and each of the pieces of paper were a memory that one of my family members had of me. <laughs> and so we went through all of them and read them and it was hysterical. It was a lot of fun. And I really felt like this page was really important to document that part. So I transcribed every single piece of <laughs> paper from that present on to, um, a piece of paper that I will end up creating a pocket for on this page and it will be tucked in behind my eight and a half by 11 between the uh, 12 by 12. So you'll see that as we get going. If any part of the process is confusing since I probably won't be explaining too much, just ask me in the comments. I'll try and help explain, but I'm trying to keep this video a little slow down a little longer uh, so it's easier to see what I'm doing but I really wanted to read through these 30 memories because I had such a good time reading them out together with my family uh, and I wanted to share that with you guys so I'm just gonna go through them um, the first one was from my brother he said when you got put in the boys division at taekwondo at a taekwondo tournament and won and made one of them cry I thought that was cool that you beat all the boys so um, every Everyone in my family except for my mom did taekwondo at one point and yeah there <laughs> it's actually a part two of another story at one competition um i threw a kick to this girl's head in one of the sparring competitions and she looked up at my foot and i almost broke her nose i felt really really bad um anyways that I ended up winning at that tournament. And anyways, this competition, she was in my division again and she started crying because she didn't want to fight me because I, I that happened at the last time we fought. And I felt really bad about it, but they had asked me if I wouldn't mind and if none of the boys minded, if I could just fight in the boys division instead of the girls division. And all the boys were fine with it and I didn't really care. So I was like, sure. <laughs> um, this was, middle school I believe so the boys hadn't had their massive growth spurt so we were still about the same height so there wasn't um, really a physical disadvantage at this point um, but anyways yes I won and it was a lot of fun and one of the boys cried and um, I didn't feel too bad about that because it was really just his ego that was wounded but um, I was really proud and I didn't realize how proud my brother was about that as well. So I loved that memory <laughs> and had forgot about it until he brought that up in that little piece of paper. Um, the next one's from my sister. She said, thank you for entertaining Becca Snack Shack. I had a big entrepreneurial dreams at age eight. Um, that was a lot of fun too when we were little. Uh, Becca would create these little mini businesses that she <laughs> would basically my brother and I would patron so at one point she wanted to be a chef so she would make all of these kind of crazy snack combinations from the kitchen and she would uh, write a menu and take our orders and then she would fix us up these little snacks and she came up with some pretty cool odd combinations that ended up being pretty good um, so that was a lot of fun I did not mind entertaining that because it was free snacks I did not have to make myself. <laughs> um, the next one's from my mom. She said, reading Harry Potter, the Harry Potter series books, and then going to watch each of the movies. You were so excited at the beginning of each movie you couldn't contain yourself, which is very true. I, like Harry Potter, was my life at this age. I loved everything Harry Potter, and the books were just a really big staple in growing up because having my mom read those books to all of us was just like my favorite part of every night. 
And so when they started making them into a movie, I just remember in the very, very, very first movie, I like I absolutely, like she said, could not contain myself. My eyes were big as saucers and I was just bouncing on the edge of my seat. And I just <laughs> um, really loved that memory, too. But every single movie, like she said, I just couldn't wait because I just loved Harry Potter so much. Um, the next one is again from my brother. He said, getting scared when you jumped out of the closet and I basically melted. Um, my brother, I think, is the only one in my family that enjoys being scared. So we would play a hide and seek game, but we'd put a twist on it where we would try to scare the person like... <laughs> We would try to scare each other. And so he had already checked the coat closet. And so once he moved on, I went to hide in the coat closet because I was like, oh, he's not going to check this place twice. Um, and he could not find me or my sister. And my dad knew that I was in the coat closet. And so he kind of played into it and scolded my brother for leaving a coat out on the couch and kind of told him, like, you need to put away your coat. Go and hang this up in the closet. <laughs> uh, and so when he opened the door to hang the coat up, he wasn't even thinking I would be in there. And I jumped out and scared him. And he, like, the bones melted in his body. He just, like, collapsed on the floor. It was so funny. Like, he's the best person to scare. Um, so that was another really funny one, too. Um, the next one's from my sister. All of the wine and cheese nights, enough said, which is true. Me, my sister, and my mom love our little get-togethers where we have a charcuterie board, and there's always a lot of fun. Um, the next one's from my mom. Going to craft shows and garage sales with you. You always point out things I wouldn't notice on my own. It's so special to have this time with my girls. And again, I couldn't agree more. I really love doing that kind of stuff with my mom. We always find really cool things. Um, especially garage sales. We love our art shows, um, but garage sales are one of those things where you can just find amazing stuff for absolutely nothing. Um, and so I had a lot of fun. I pretty much furnished my entire house with either hand-me-downs from my mom or things I got at a garage sale. <laughs> um, so that's really awesome. Uh, the next one is from my brother playing on the same team in soccer when we were younger, but you would score all the goals. I would just run around. We actually have this on a home video where my brother's literally chasing a butterfly on the opposite side of the field while we're playing our soccer game. Um, we're really close in age. We're like a year and a half apart. So, um, when we were little, we actually were in the same age group for some of the co-ed teams. So we would just be on the same team. And I was really competitive <laughs> if the Taekwondo story didn't um, hint at that. But I, I loved soccer. That was the first sport I really got into when I was really little. And um, we were on a co-ed team and I was actually the only girl. So it was me and all, all the boys. And I'm pretty sure I was the best player, if I don't say so myself. I definitely scored the most goals. But yeah, my brother would literally be chasing a butterfly <laughs> on the opposite side of the field, um, which I also thought was funny. <laughs> um, the next one's from my sister. Every time we would do each other's makeup and pick out each other's outfits we, when we were younger uh, was so much fun for me. We really thought we were little stylists. So there was this TV show. I don't even know if it's still on, but it's called What Not to Wear. And basically there's these two stylists that um, help someone who their family, friends have deemed their wardrobe just really not good and they get rid of the entire old wardrobe and then gives them three outfits as um, kind of a baseline for how to dress your body type and stuff like that and then give them a bunch of money to go on a huge shopping spree to replenish their whole wardrobe based off of those three looks so Beck and I would always go into each other's closets and basically set out three different types of looks for each other um, including jewelry and everything shoes <laughs> and it was a lot of fun so we would kind of do a work appropriate outfit um, a more dressy, uh, formal outfit, and then a more like casual outfit. And that was, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, but we were definitely inspired by what not to wear when we did that. Um, and doing each other's makeup and stuff was really fun. Uh, the next one's from my mom. She said, I don't know what I would do if I actually had to plan one of our family trips on my own. You always find and plan the most fun, interesting, and diverse travel agendas. So 
TripAdvisor, (laughs) y'all. If you're going anywhere, you know what? Right now, go on your phone. If you don't have TripAdvisor, download it. It's free. Look in your own town, like search your own town. There are so many things that I weren't, I wasn't even aware were around me. That's really cool. Um, And because TripAdvisor is review based, you can uh, read everyone else's experience, but you can also search by, you know, five stars, best experiences. And whenever we go anywhere, even if it's just for a day in a new place, I look up TripAdvisor, (laughs) Um, even if it's just for somewhere to eat, because sometimes there's these really cool places that you'll just never know are there um, unless you look at something like that. So that is always my number one tip for um, planning a vacation or anything (laughs) is TripAdvisor. And usually what I do is I'll just compile a whole list of all the top things that I found. And then um, when we're all together, we'll kind of decide, okay, these are our top three things. And then if we ever have time, we'll go back to the list and be like, oh, can we squeeze in something else? And we, we end up doing a lot of cool different things that way. And it's definitely the best way to find the best restaurants too. (laughs) So I have fun planning our trips. (laughs) Um, But the next one's from my brother. He said, um, when we got the world high score on the Lizzie McGuire game on Disney.com games and our computer froze so it didn't record, my brother had this thing where he wanted to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. And if he knew there was a record for something that he thought he could beat, he would obsess over it until he beat he beat it. And so there is this Disney game and um it's kind of like an arcade game where like the top scores are all recorded and um so you could see everyone around the world who played this game and what their scores were. And I forgot even what this game was about. But we beat the high score and yeah, our computer froze. And when it rebooted, we checked the website and yeah, we were not the top one and we were devastated. But even things like my brother has a bunch of the Guinness World Record books and he thought he could beat the pogo stick uh, world record. And he literally did. He practiced pogo jumping until he literally beat the world record for jumps on a pogo stick. And um he was really sad that he realized that you can't be put into the Guinness Book of World Records without one of their representatives coming and witnessing you beating it. (laughs) So that was a whole nother thing too. But yeah, (laughs) I remember that. Um, The next one's from my sister. Jumping on your bed with you and Thomas. We were all jumping over each other and having fun, even though we were definitely told to stop so we wouldn't get hurt. I promptly fell off your bed, broke your lava lamp, and burned my leg. So mom was right on that one. Nonetheless, I remember how much... Uh, we all laughed until I burned my leg. So yeah, I forgot about that. I, um, I forgot that's what happened to my lava lamp, but those things get hot. I don't know how those things were ever allowed to be made because they just seem like extreme fire hazards. (laughs) Uh, but yeah, I'd forgotten about that too, that that was, um, funny. She didn't have a permanent injury from that, but I remember that she hurt her leg. (laughs) Um, the next one is from my mom. Crossing the street in front of Henry's for a previous uh, birthday celebration when you blew a heel in the middle of Main Street and literally stopped traffic. And then when retelling the story shortly after, laughed so hard at the picture presented floundering, trying to stand back up to get to the other side. This was only a couple years ago. I was strutting my stuff. I thought I looked so cute because I dressed up for my birthday celebration. We were going to my favorite restaurant in downtown, which was Henry's Louisiana Grill. And because it's a historic town, there's a cobblestone crosswalks and my heel got stuck in the cobblestones and completely fell off my heel. And I just ate it in the middle of an intersection where there were cars on all four sides waiting to go. (laughs) And I couldn't get back up because my shoes were zipped on and I could not stand with my heel dangling off. And it was really embarrassing. Um, 
a little, I mean, it was funny, but I definitely even have secondhand embarrassment thinking about it now, but it, it was hysterical. So I ended up having to take off both of my shoes and walking barefoot. And then at least I had a long skirt, but I was in the restaurant barefoot the whole time because I didn't have backup shoes. And I just literally couldn't even wear the heel that I had um, broken um, so yeah, we laughed at that <laughs> and I'm pretty sure a picture surfaced somewhere. I don't know if it was my brother who's, uh, there was a picture somewhere that someone had posted who wasn't even there, who I didn't even know, but somehow my brother saw where my heel was left in the middle of the intersection and we realized it was mine and it was taken right after that. And it, it was, the whole thing was just kind of funny, but, um, I don't do heels anymore because of that. <laughs> um, yeah, that one was funny too. The next one's from my brother. He said, uh, first funny memory to pop into my head was hitting you in the head with a dustpan. This also was a home video that we, uh, I don't know if he remembered this from personal experience because he was little, but it's like our favorite, one of our favorite clips from our home videos where I'm just practicing like tumbling and doing somersaults on my little blue gymnastics mat. And my brother runs in with this hot pink dustpan um, and starts beating me over the head with it. And I don't, I don't know what compelled him to do that, but it is to the date one of our favorite clips in our home videos just because it's so funny and it was just so out of the blue that he would do that. <laughs> um, <but laughs> the next one's from my sister. All of the St. Augustine tours, you're so much fun to do stuff like that with because you truly enjoy it as much as I do. You're better about taking pictures and documenting all the fun times than I am, which again, true, but I'm the scrapbooker, so kind of comes with the territory that I have to remember to take pictures and document, but this also kind of leads into the TripAdvisor thing. That was one of the vacations I planned purely through TripAdvisor, and we ended up finding a lot of really cool historical um tours we did a kayak tour there was a paranormal tour like a lot of really cool things in that city um that we planned out <laughs> um the next one is from my mom she said i have so many funny and sweet memories of all the notes you used to write when you were uh okay used to write you were the queen of writing when you were in the doghouse for something i loved reading your journals from school you held nothing back especially when you wrote the funniest moment of my life was when my brother wore my mom's bra and underwear in parentheses she wrote and also drew a very good picture of thomas doing just that and that was when i was seven um yeah i it's funny because I never liked to read up until probably junior year of high school, um, but I really liked writing. <laughs> and um, yeah, when I was in trouble and I didn't feel like I could talk to my mom to apologize or something like that, I would just write a really sappy letter, like pouring my heart out <laughs> and slip it under her door or something for her to see. Um <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like it usually usually worked um but yeah that's funny I my mom still has a lot of the pictures like that from our school assignments that she includes in our scrapbooks from when we're little and that one definitely has a scrapbook page I, I remember <laughs> um the next one's from Thomas he just said playing super smash bros that's it um <laughs> <laughs> my brother had a Nintendo 64 I think it was and we were also really competitive playing all of those games too and one of our favorites was Super Smash Bros. Um, the next one's from my sister. Being able to turn killing carpenter bees into a game while sitting on the porch swing at the barn. Thinking about it now that was nearly psychotic that I was able to do that. So at the horse barn we rode at um <laughs> There were carpenter bees that would eat the wood in the barn and kind of destroy different things. So um, there were some tennis rackets hanging up on the wall and there was a swinging, swinging, um, hanging swing. So I'm trying to say on the front porch. So at the end of the day, when we were waiting for our parents to come pick us up, um, we would just swat carpenter bees with the racket and then once they fell to the ground we would step on them because we needed to get rid of them so they didn't destroy the barn <laughs> and my sister is deathly afraid of bees um i think at that point um she believed that carpenter bees could not sting or bite which i don't think carpenter bees can sting but they can bite um 
there usually are very docile and, and don't but my sister had this deathly fear of them that it is kind of funny thinking about it now that she could do that <laughs> <laughs> but I think she honestly believed at that point that in no way could they harm you. <laughs> um, so I think that kind of took the edge off of it. But that actually was fun. Um, the next one is from my mom. <laughs> Being my biggest cheerleader, I cannot count the number of tennis matches you attended. But even more than that, I have always felt your support in whatever I was doing or going through. Which, honestly, I feel like I was just trying to pay her back for it, all the things that she watched and supported me and she was always there for my horse competitions for taekwondo tournaments for soccer games for anything so um, when I got older and she was the one doing sports and stuff I really felt like it was the least I could do to come and watch her play um, and tennis is one of just those soothing sports I don't like watching sports on tv uh, but I do like going in person and watching them and tennis is just one of those games where it's just so like relaxing to watch <laughs> um so that was another one. The next one is from my sister. No, my brother. This one's from my brother. <laughs> all, all of us jumping on the trampoline uh, and made up games that we did. So our trampoline was one that had the blue, um, blue cross on it. So it looked like a, a, a pie that was cut into four sections. And so we had all kinds of games <laughs> that involved um, the lines on, printed on the trampoline and we definitely had a lot of fun <laughs> with that too. Um, my sister said all the fun photo shoots at Robin's Barn. So yeah, that's another um, place where my sister and I rode horses and we definitely like doing photo shoots with the horses there. Uh, the next one's from my mom. She said going to Megan's wedding in Portland and Colton's wedding in Texas with you. Those were very special trips. Um, those were two of my cousins out of state that we went to their wedding and those again were two kind of just weekend trips that we crammed a ton of stuff in. Thank you TripAdvisor. Um, and both of those places were awesome. Um, both of those uh, trips have been scrapbooked. So if you want to see either of those trips, they're, they're already done. Um, but we did a, a lot of really cool things in both of those places. <laughs> when we visited um, Texas, that's when we went to Waco. So we got to visit the silos and all of that, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those two trips were, were a lot of fun. Um, let's see, what's the next one? This one's from my brother. When you hit me in the face with a tennis racket because you were trying to knock my hat off, instead you hit me directly in the face. Yeah, sorry about that, Thomas. <laughs> There's not much more to say about that. That's exactly what happened, and I felt really bad about it. <laughs> Although I feel like he was being extra dramatic to get me in trouble at the time, because I feel like I definitely did not hit him as hard as he was claiming. Anyways, <laughs> um, my sister said... You taught me how to ride a bike. Even though I got really nervous, you were able to make me feel better until I was able to ride a bike on my own. My sister literally learned how to ride a bike. I swear it was like 20 minutes. It took me so long to learn how to ride a bike and I feel like she picked it up immediately. Um, but yeah, I was proud of her and I was proud that I was the one that was able to teach her that. So that was also a nice memory. Um, the next one's from my mom. You were fearless in everything you did from little on. You were never scared of the dark, loved all animals, entered any new sport with such enthusiasm. And then in parentheses, she writes, and aggression. <laughs> and she said, you were seldom shy in any situation. Which, yeah, when I was little, like, I wish I was like that now. I don't know what happened and why I lost that. But I remember when I was little, like, I, it didn't matter what I was doing. I wanted to be the best. And <laughs> um, I was never shy around people or strangers or anything. And I kind of miss that because I have a fair bit of social anxiety now. And I wish I could, like, channel a little me um, <laughs> to be as brave as I used to be. Um, but that also kind of links into... Uh, you know, the soccer and the taekwondo and even the horses, like I'm, I am just really competitive when it comes to sports. And, um, especially when I was little, I definitely wanted to be the best. So I can see where that came from. <laughs> um, my brother said, when you helped me get my Pokemon cards back from a kid who gave me a bad trade was good to have muscle <laughs> in parentheses with me. Um, 
<laughs> or in quotes, he said muscle. Yeah, we. that's another thing. Me and my brother were like really big into Pokemon when the cards first came out. And we carried them everywhere. If we found any kid anywhere that had Pokemon cards, we would want to trade. And um, I, yeah, I remember I forgot. I think we were at daycare or something. And um, that happened. And he would not give. I think he had a fake card or something. And Thomas realized that the it was a fake card after he traded. And he, yeah. And so I went with him to get his card back because he was not going to give the card back. And um, I guess when I showed up, I was I really intimidating when I was little. I don't re I don't remember being into I remember standing up for my brother in a lot of situations. Um, but I didn't feel like I was scary. <laughs> but we, yeah, he gave that card back. Um <laughs> <laughs> and then my sister said, uh, when the lake slash pond dried up at the barn and we had to rescue Jen from the mud because she was trying to save the fish, there's, yeah, there's this like little lake at one of the barns we used to ride at and every winter it'd kind of dry up and get really like swampy and you would like sink in the mud <laughs> and... For some reason, one of the girls that we rode with thought she could help one of the fish because it got stuck in more of the shallow part of the lake. But like, there was no way you could walk on the mud to get out there <laughs> without sinking into it. It was like literal quicksand mud. Um, and we had to like form a human chain to pull her out because she caught a fair ways out before she was stuck like up to her hips and couldn't get out. <laughs> um, yeah. That was a fun little side adventure at the barn. <laughs> um, the next one's from my mom. You were so committed to keeping Santa, the Easter buddy, and the tooth fairy alive uh, and well for Thomas and Becca. They clearly believed in the magic longer because of you. I don't remember all the things I did, I, but there's one that sticks in my head, and it was uh, St. Patrick's Day. Usually my parents would get us all these green snacks and drinks. They would dye the milk green. There'd be all this green stuff around the house. And they just they just accidentally forgot one year. And it was when my brother and sister were, were still very much into that. And I didn't want them to think that they had forgotten. So I planned this whole in-depth scavenger hunt thing. <laughs> um that the leprechauns had set up for us. And it was fun for me because I had to pretend like I didn't know anything about this. So I was just as like surprised as they were. And I do remember that. That's a really, that was a really fond memory um, setting up that, that St. Patrick's Day scavenger hunt for them. Um, next one's from my brother. When we were spitting in Becca's face when she was a baby and thought it was so funny. So we kept spitting in each other's faces, which granted we weren't spitting. We were doing like raspberries with our tongue and she thought it was just really, really funny. And so for like an hour straight, we just did raspberries in each other's faces. Um, but yeah, that was funny too. And we have that on home video as well. I'm pretty sure. Um, the next one is from my mom scrapbooking with you when you were younger and now seeing all of your videos and pages You are an inspiration to me and my scrapbooking efforts. Oh, that's so sweet <laughs> I love you mom. I'm glad you're scrapbooking again, and I had a lot of fun scrapbooking when I was little too uh, I mentioned that I mentioned that on a lot of my tag face-to-face -face videos that my mom's the reason that I was even able to start scrapping and was my original inspiration. So that's a sweet memory to kind of see it from her perspective. <laughs> um, the next one's from my sister. She said, I love surfing in Hawaii with you. It was so much fun and I'm glad we got to experience that together. Ditto. That was awesome. I, I don't really, I don't think of surfing as being super um, like physical because I like had always thought Yes, you have to have balance, but really you're standing up on the board and the wave is doing all of the work and you just steer the board. No, I, this is TMI. I'm sorry, you guys, but I like literally threw up because it was so much physical effort. And part of it is like you're laying down on the board while you're paddling super hard. So like you're not even upright. So if your stomach gets a little funny or you start like overexerting yourself, like... <laughs> It, yeah, at least it was water. No one knew, but I remember. And surfing is work. It was a lot of fun, though. 
Um, the last one is from my mom and it's actually the last one I read on my birthday and it's the one I wanted to keep last on this page because I think it's the sweetest one. Um, but she said, staying true to yourself and not letting others sway you from your beliefs, your moral code or your interests. You have stayed the course when it was, has not been the easiest choice or the most popular um, thing to do and you have not let others veer you off course or diminish what you believe enjoy and or hold dear love mom and I almost cried when I read that on my birthday and those are all the, the memories that they wrote for me and I just thought that was just like the sweetest thing I wanted to share that because I feel like most of us who are scrapbookers are sentimental people and I feel, just feel like that's a really good extra birthday gift to do for somebody <laughs> if that's something you think they would appreciate. But I wanted to share all those mem memories with you guys because I just, we were dying as I was reading them. We were cracking up. I'm pretty sure I was crying from being emotional, but also like just really laughing so hard <laughs> because they just brought up so many things. Um, but yeah, so that's the paper that you guys saw me make. I added this little yellow circular tab and that is what is in the pocket behind my wood grain eight and a half by 11 so I can slide it in and out. I did die cut that little black arrow and write the word pull on it so that it was pretty obvious that you're supposed to pull that out. I really don't like doing interactive elements on my pages because I don't want people to have to take my layouts out of the page protectors and all of that. But this specific one, you don't have to, like you can reach it from the top of the page protector without having to remove the whole layout. So I was okay with that. But I just felt like that was such an important thing to be able to keep and record forever. And I still have all of those little strips of paper <laughs> <laughs> in my scrap room there um, in the little container they came in on my bookshelves but I wanted a second place for them where they were all kind of laid out and um, in a way that I knew would be able to be preserved even if something happened to all of those little strips at some point but at this point I'm pretty much done I've matted my eight and a half by 11 onto the 12 by 12 I wanted one extra little detail so uh, I'm using the polka dot branding strip from that little info card that comes in the front of all Felicity Jane kits. And I'm just adding that little black and white polka dot to either side of this wood grain just to give it a little flourish. And so that there's something <laughs> that kind of connects it and layers it uh, behind on the yellow gingham. But I'm pretty much done after this. Uh, the actual journaling I wrote on the page just said one of the gifts one gift was a box full of 30 memories written by Thomas, Becca, and Mom. And so that kind of leads into you pulling that tab out and being able to read all 30 memories. I decided to just title it 30 because it's my 30th birthday. And uh, like I like to do with all alphabets, that isn't really a color or style of page to make it look like it uh, makes sense. I'll add a couple other stickers from the alphabet somewhere else. So that's why I decided to add the brackets around the journaling. But I think I stayed to the sketch pretty closely. Instead of having a different paper that was a circular element, I decided to do the stitching as my circular element but I try to keep the flow of the design similar and do my um, kind of title and journaling in the same spot and all of that. But here are the close-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was kind of a different process. If anything was confusing that I wasn't able to explain, just let me know and I'll try to explain kind of what I did. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.